Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Answer and a Call. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, your show host and executive producer. This is a series all about evangelism and discipleship, and we're highlighting ministries all around the country that are serious about doing just that. We're coming to you live today from NRB 2022, held in Nashville, Tennessee. A lot of Christian religious broadcasters from film, radio, television, publications. We got glory stories to be sharing. And what's interesting is God brought Marcus Ellis to our convention. He's in another convention, but he came by, saw what we were doing, shared his miracle story. And I'm like, hey, God is still in the miracle business. So, Marcus, thank you so much for coming by and hanging out with our viewers and sharing your story. Well, thank you so much, Pastor. It's wonderful to be here. I had a terrible journey through terminal cancer. And so I know what it's like to hear the hand of the Lord, to watch the hand of the Lord, to give wisdom, to get out of the terrors that are going on all around us. Yeah, amen. Love that beard. And that was my first comment to you, and that was your answer to me. So g give us a little bit of the background. Tell us your story. I mean, we, you, you know, let's start a little bit with, uh, you know, your faith in God, where you were at, and um, a little bit about your journey. Yeah. Well, I was a minister of music at a 7,000-member church in Dallas, and I've been in music all my life. And I... I built a castle in Dallas. So it was an event planning outfit. I was the number one largest catering company in Dallas. So I've had a huge background in business and all kinds of things. Um, in uh, 2015, I was diagnosed with cancer here at Vanderbilt in Nashville. And I went in as stage four. I'd lost 50 pounds in six weeks. I was a shell of myself. And my family said, you're not gonna die on our watch. So they took me in. And uh, literally they told me I was stage four when I walked in there, and which is, if you, your viewers know this, that's the end zone. And I went in there and they started immediately giving me all the treatments. And uh, I'm not really a fan of, of uh, the treatments that we have now in, in mainstream uh, medicine, because what they did was they gave me what they call side effects. And I don't even buy that term. I now know all the terminology. I know where they get these terms. Uh, but, you know, side effects are nothing. They're direct effects. I was a former gymnast. And so what happened, I have head-to-toe damage. Your comment about the beard is really funny. Yeah. This is basically my um, signal to the American Medical Association that I am now able to grow hair. Amen. I had yeah. no hair. A lot of people going through cancer treatments, uh, chemo, it just, because it kills all the rapid reproducing cells. I too had stage four cancer, and my left tonsil metastasized into my lymph nodes, and they thought it was gonna go everywhere else, but it's been four years all clear, so. I didn't do the platinum stuff. I did a monoclonal treatment, but I didn't get a chance to lose my hair. But that's a big deal. Oh, yeah. And that's a really gorgeous beard. I mean, even we were putting the mic on you today, and our, our post-production assistant, Anna, was like, what do you do with your beard? Do you, you know, so, I mean, that must be a great conversation starter, it's right? It's great. I love it. And I'm so grateful to have beard, have hair. Yeah. It's interesting because, basically, they gave me head-to-toe problems, you right. know, with a loss of all my hair, the chemo brain. They, gave, they took my uh, immune system, so I literally had no way to go out of the house for a year. Wow. And I went through all this with uh, pulmonary embolisms and a heart attack and bone loss and gum loss in my teeth arthritis, neuropathy, you name it, I had it. And at the end of the year, I thought it was done, but they said, no, you didn't get it all. So we need to come back for more chemo, more radiation, a stem cell transplant. And I said, what if I don't do any of that? And he said, I'll give you six months. And at that point, I went naturopathically because I developed a network of people that are curing and healing diseases, all diseases. Amen. AIDS, HIV, right. uh, Parkinson's, ALS, all of these diseases are reversible. Right. Right. But you have to realize all diseases, cellular malfunction, system-wide. It doesn't matter the location of the tumor. Right. Yeah. So I'm here at another medical conference, naturopathic medical conference, where all these people in that tribe understand what I've been through. Exactly. And literally, I went, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you know, God is the manufacturer, right? He designed totally. this body. It's, we don't have anything, even our cameras are, don't even, you know, come close to what the eyeball does. That's and, right. You know, and if he made it, he knows how to fix it. I'm and, you know, there's a, a section of a Christian Christianity that wants to pray everything away, and I get it. We need to pray about things. And, you know, there's been miracles where God restored the sight to the blind by sure. using some spit and muddle, and he did it that way because they said you can't do spit and muddle on the Sabbath or put wine in their eyes because the Pharisees had some extra laws on the books so right. Jesus would currently tell them, you know. That's stop. right. But anyway, he knows how to heal, and there are natural things that the body needs. So... You know, it requires education, sure. wisdom on how to deal with the body as well as faith. They go hand in hand, right? I love it. Both are very important. And yeah. I kept asking Father for wisdom. 
right. because I know that I needed wisdom to get out of the system. The system was killing me and I didn't know what to do. And I kept saying, Father, what do I do? So I, I contacted, and I'm telling you, you're exactly right. The keys for healing are basically you're trusting in Father to teach you how to do what you need to do. Right. We have been taught all of our lives to eat the foods that are horrible for us. I mean, you look at the grocery store, everything's loaded with sugar. Right. You know, even yeah. the diagnostic tools of the medical profession. And the cancer, they say sugar's crack. It actually, they, oh, it they load you up with sugar before they do the PET scan because that's what fires them off. And Radioactive they see glucose. Yeah. <laughs> they put glucose in your system and then they irradiate you to see what they fed it. The cancer goes ballistic because it's been fed a fabulous meal. Wow. And now it's like, okay, now they're going to see what they did. Right. I'm like, wait a minute, what's wrong with this? The diagnostic tools, like mammograms, never take them. Always think about a thermogram. See, I know the options out there right, now. Right, yeah. So it's important for people to know if you ask Father for wisdom, right. and he'll give you wisdom to know how to do this. Hosea 4, six. it says, my people perish for a lack of, of understanding, or That's lack right. of wisdom. Right. And if you don't know what to do, it could be fatal, you know? Well, I, I, for me, when I was going through it as well, I, 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 I felt like God said, ask them what they would do if you were me. So when they started giving me options, do you want to do surgery? Do you want to do radiation? Do you want to do you know, chemo, I said, well, if you were me, what, what would you, you do? do? And they would all jump as fast. Well, well, if I were you, I would do this. And I'm like, well, that's what we're going to do. Let's pray. And until you get a second or a conflicting opinion, <laughs> you, you know, God, I'm trusting that God's going to use this person to fix this body. Amen. And, you know, and if I don't have a piece about it, there'll be a reason for that too. I, I have to tell you that the treatments cost me $400,000 of conventional oncology, and then I was terminal. Wow. At that point, it went naturopathically, and it, which cost me 25000 So there's a big problem here. In the book yeah. of Yermiyahu, you call him Jeremiah, he literally, in 6 and 8, he said, my people are greedy for gain. They're all running after rewards. Right. I became a business model pastor yeah. at some point, and it really, to this day, it really yeah. bothers me yeah. because I'm not a business model. I'm a human being that needed Amen. the word heal Amen. and the word cure. Yeah. And I don't care. They're four-letter swear words to a lot of people. To right. me, that's my life. I need to be healed. I right. need to be cured. Amen. I don't care about treatments. Right. And right. I know 76% of the oncology people will not take chemo or give it to their loved ones. So I love your answer. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, what would you do in my shoes? Right. Yeah. So anyway, so I did the, the right thing. I got out of the system. And literally, my oncologist said, you'll be dead in six months if you don't take more. And so I went naturopathically, a nutritional biochemist in Florida. And he used state-of-the-art equipment that's 40 years out non-toxic, non-invasive diagnostic tools. And then he said, okay, you see what you gotta do? I came back to Nashville, I never saw him again. I literally did everything that he said. And six months later, I got a call from oncology. They said, we want to follow up. And I said, okay. The young lady said, what date do you want? Right. And I said, well, how about March 17th? Yeah. She said, fine. She did not know that was the precise date of my supposed death wow. that the oncologist has given me. So I went in there and literally they did yeah. Chem 24 profiles, their blood work, their lab assessments, and they found no cancer, Pastor. Praise but God. what's interestingly enough, no one at oncology asked me what I had done. And so they didn't want to know. They didn't want to know. And that's that's why I veer with health care. Right. Because so now you have a message. Absolutely. Your misery became your ministry. Absolutely. So what happened was, at the date that I was diagnosed, brother, I was the number one man in America selling, don't die laughing, my name hangs on a wall plaque at the corporate headquarters in Cleveland as the number one selling man in America selling, don't die laughing, cancer policies. Wow. And so I went in, I had one of our policies, you know, and I used it for conventional treatments, but actually conventional treatments didn't do anything for me. And when I went naturopathically after the failure of oncology, literally my own company denied all benefits to me. Wow. Gas, they wouldn't give me hotel, they wouldn't give me nothing. So wow. I had to do that all on my own. Because you so, weren't doing it their way. Well, I realized that healthcare is involved in this, what I call pink ribbon propaganda mirage, to say that you've got to use these tools and you've got to go with this. But they're all in it together. Right. And I said, to, when, I speak circus. At, uh, when I speak at conferences, many times people will come up to me and say, well, there's lovely people in oncology, you're not very nice about it. And I always say, well, yes, there are lovely people in oncology. There's lovely people at Wendy's. I'm not saying they're not lovely people, but 1,600 people a day are dying from cancer in America. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, what kind of a track record is this? So I developed another way, and I, I just want you to know this. This is the cool part of my mission. I literally developed viatical settlements. Are you familiar with that word? I'm not. It's a Latin word, which means via the way, provisions along the way. So I yeah. literally provide provisions like the old Roman soldiers used to do right. on the Roman roads. Right. I provide their provisions. I buy people's life insurance policies. Right. Right. And I give them the funds tax exempt right. to go naturopathically or whatever right. way they want to. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. 
That's really good. How can people get in touch with you, learn more, support your work? It's, it's a, a ministry. ministry. It is. Yeah. I literally turn families' lives around. I am Marcus Ellis, and my number is 931-722-4949. I have a website that's marcusellis.org, and you can reach me at my emails, marcusellis74 at gmail. But I want you to know, on the .org, the, my website, there's a 17-minute short video of my journey through terminal cancer, and then also a discussion about viatical settlements. Nobody in America, in this room, a thousand people, only five would know that they could actually sell their policy now while they're still alive. Wow. And get the proceeds tax exempt to get out and do what they need to do. Amen. I'm telling you, it's, it's a remarkable thing. And I've changed so many lives in America. The families have money to work with. And it's yeah. fabulous, Pastor. And to God be all the glory, right? Amen, brother. That's Amen. exactly right. Amen. I got into this for his glory, and I'm still going to do it. Amen. Is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us today? Well, basically, I, I love people, and I want to help his people because his people are the ones that need to have the health. And we're struggling, so many of us, with, with our diets. Nobody knows that nutrition is key. So they've got to get back. They've got to look at their diet in every way. I did about 16 things. People call me and say, what are the 16 things? Every journey is different, so I tailor it to every person. Right. But I want you to know I talk to terminal, critical, and chronic people every day. And the worse off they are, the more the funding I can get for them. Amen. So I just want you to know it's out there. I want to help everyone to do kingdom of heaven's work. Amen. And that's why I'm here. Amen. Praise God. That's why you do what you do. Amen. Marcus Ellis, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, stay tuned. we got a lot going on here at NRB 2022, Nashville, Tennessee. Keep watching so you too can be an overcomer and answer the call. How would you like to partner with Overcomers TV? Become a ministry partner, spreading the good news about your ministry and Jesus Christ. We're selecting ministries for upcoming episodes of Answering the Call. We can also help you produce your own show. Partnering with us is easier than you think. Just visit our website, overcomerstv.live. Be an overcomer today with Overcomers TV.